A St. Louis police officer has been indicted for assaulting a fellow undercover officer. So now this is a interesting story here. There's a couple of interesting twists here. And it also gives you a, a, an insight into how cops see protesters, specifically black protesters. Okay. So now uh, protests happened in St. Louis uh, in 2017 as a result of the acquittal of an officer named Jason Stockley. So here's your context for the story. Now, according to the Washington Post, Stockley had killed 24-year-old Anthony Lamar Smith in December 2011 after chasing him following an alleged drug buy. Now, Stockley had an unauthorized personal AK-47 on the scene as were recorded on dash cam during the chase saying he was, quote, going to kill Smith. Okay, well, he wasn't kidding because that's exactly what happened. He shot and killed Smith. Not only that, but he was also alleged to have planted a weapon in Smith's car to try to justify the shooting. Well, I mean, what was I, what was I going to do? He, uh, he was armed. He was armed. He was a scary black man with a gun. And I just happened to have a gun. And I'm an off-duty officer. Who are you going to believe? Me or the dead guy? Me and the dead drug dealer, right? Uh, so, of course, they believed him. In 2016, local, local prosecutors had charged Stockley with first-degree murder and trying to plant false evidence. However, he was acquitted in September of 2017. Apparently, there wasn't enough to pin a murder charge on him. And so, like, well, it, free to go. Free to go. Well, yeah, you killed this guy and allegedly planted a weapon, but it, you know what? Free to go anyway. Now, after that, St. Louis erupted in protest. Massive protests. Now, here's where the current story and the current indictments come into play. Now, St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department officer Dustin Boone was actually looking forward to these protests, right? So again, he's a police officer. And after this acquittal, St. Louis erupted, as you would expect when there is a massive miscarriage of justice. So now Boone wants these protests, but it's not because he actually agrees with them and wants justice. No, 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 quite the opposite, actually, as we've seen from certain text messages. In fact, on uh, September 15th of 2017, the day of the verdict, he said, quote, it is going to get ignorant tonight when it comes to the protests, obviously. So basically calling anybody who wants justice for Anthony Lamar Smith, well, you're ignorant. It's going to get ignorant tonight out in the streets. In fact, it gets worse. He says, quote, it's going to be a lot of fun beating the hell out of these shitheads once the sun goes down and nobody can tell us apart. So in case you weren't clear, he can't wait to get out and beat up protesters. But there's more. Other texts included Myers, uh, uh, Myers, who was another uh, officer, uh, who suggested they, quote, whoop some ass. Boone uh, boasted about how he would beat people up that when they don't act right and, quote, just grab protesters and toss them around. Okay, that's very clear. We can tell uh, how he feels about these protests. Now, during the demonstrations, two days after the verdict, Boone had responded uh, to a question of how he, he and his team were dealing with it. He said, quote, a lot of cops getting hurt, but it's still a blast beating people that deserve it. I'm enjoying it every night. <laughs> to me, what they're saying is, look, we like doing police brutality against black people. We, and we can't wait to do more. And just like Stockley said he was going to kill Smith, you know, these guys ended up beating up a black protester. In fact, according to prosecutors, Boone and two other officers, Randy Hayes, as I mentioned before, Christopher Myers, uh, all those three officers threw a man to the ground and viciously beat him with a riot baton. So they said they were going to do it, that they were going to beat up protesters, and that's what they did. Now, based on those text messages... 
they had to have been, you know, they known they knew what they were doing was wrong, right? Uh, and so, but nonetheless, you're going to get people who defended that, right? Well, that protester must have had it coming, right? No, it turns out these officers beat that man, even though he was complying with their instructions, 100%. And we've seen this a hundred times, right? If you comply, even if you comply, if you're black, there's a better chance of you getting either shot or beat up. And that's it. So... Now, here's the thing. The man that they ended up beating up was beaten so badly that he couldn't, couldn't eat and then he ended up losing 20 pounds. In fact, he's still recovering. And the officers, after that beating, it's not that they were remorseful. Oh, no. They loved it. In fact, Hayes was quoted as saying, going rogue does feel good. So they knew. They knew. What they were doing was wrong. Now, too bad for them that the man that they end up savagely beating was actually one of their own. Oops. According to the St. Louis Dispatch, the man originally identified as LH turned out to be uh, Luther Hall. Now, Luther Hall is a veteran city police officer who was working undercover during the protests. Though he made no effort to resist, and this is really important, the three officers still brutally beat Hall. Now, look, if you're an undercover officer and you're, you know, trying to keep your cover, obviously, and you're approached by other officers, well, then you're going to comply. So this isn't an issue of, oh, he was resisting arrest and he was whatever. No, he was actually doing what he's supposed to do because he himself knows the rules. He himself complied. But it doesn't matter if you comply because these three men were out on a mission to beat up protesters. They didn't care. They didn't care. Now, Hall ended up being left with a two centimeter hole above his lip, an injured tailbone, and back injuries that required surgery, and still hasn't recovered enough to return to work. In the weeks afterwards, and it gets worse. Prosecutors say the three police officers, in an effort to cover their ass, gave false statements about the arrest and even directly contacted Hall to try to dissuade him from pressing charges. Myers also allegedly destroyed Hall's cell phone. Prosecutors say another officer, Bailey Coletta, who has also been indicted, who was, uh, who was romantically involved with Hayes, by the way, also lied to investigators about the assault, according to the indictment. Boone Hayes, and, uh, Boone, Hayes, and Myers face charges of depriving Hall of his constitutional rights and conspiring to obstruct justice. Myers also faces a charge of destroying evidence, and Coletta herself is charged with obstructing, influencing, and impeding a grand jury. Now, these are just indictments. These are serious charges, though, right? And so they're going to have to go to court and they're going to have to find the evidence or, or present the evidence in a way that convinces a grand jury. Now, the thing is, is that these uh, four people are being defended by the police union. And not the guy who got savagely beat. Here you have police officers who couldn't wait to beat up a black protester, whether or not they were following the law, whether or not they were being compliant. And the guy that they happened to find was being compliant because he was a police officer. And yet, they don't care. When they beat him up, they were like, oh no, let's go and lie. Let's break the law, lie to prosecutors, uh, lie to investigators, Try to threaten, I believe, Hall, breaking his phone, all this stuff. And so, look, this is gross on so many counts. Again, police officers breaking the law because they think it's, they think it's fun to beat up on protesters when they're black. These protesters were looking for justice. And it's sickening to know that these are the types of people that are hired to protect and serve. They're not protecting or serving anything. And think about it. If it weren't a fellow officer, 
if it had just been a black protester, would this be a major case? Would there be any question? Oh, no, he was resisting arrest, of course. But what are you going to believe, the police officer or just a random black protester? I mean, come on. This would probably end up being just another day in America if it were, weren't a police officer. And when you think about that, man, it, it's disastrous. I mean, police, if you're a black person, you know that they're not there to protect and serve you, right? Even if you're an officer, you're still not one of them. The union won't back you, but they'll back your alleged attackers. If you're one of them, you're still not one of them. And if the grand jury acquits these officers too, which is a possibility, then I think that tells you all you need to know about the state of policing and race relations in America. Now, I hope there is justice. I hope that they do find the evidence uh, and justice is served for what has been a horrific, brutal beating and a brutal case. Um, but based on what we've seen lately, I don't have a lot of faith in that system. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.